No one wise side is a very interesting story. You probably have never heard of him, but you definitely know some of the people he's been sampled by. He's been sampled by people like Frank Ocean, Kanye West, Jay Electrona, Logic, and many more. I can't really name them all currently. He went from being in prison for 40 plus years to being a multi-Grammy nominated artist. He has a really crazy story, so you know, we're gonna be covering that today. Surprisingly, from all the uh, stats I've given you and how popular he's been among pretty talented music artists, he's only released one album. He doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. <laughs> Growing up, Norman Whiteside was the only black kid in his school, therefore, he felt very out of place. He was being bullied about it and growing up and in the olden times with segregation still being a big thing, he was being bullied by kids, he was just generally felt out of place. Many of the kids taunted his name, being Norman Whiteside and being a black kid, which, you know, caused him a lot of hurt in the time, but through that, today he is still a very nice person, has always been known to be very talkative. Now, I can't say anything because I talk my ass off. He always loved music throughout his life. And eventually, with a couple of different records he had made, he eventually got enough support by the Numero Group. Probably butchered that name again. I butchered a lot of names. There are going to be a couple more in the future. He got enough attention to record a album. Four. He recorded the album at Al Studios. Now, he was at a very limited budget at the time, so... He was, you know, he only had an hour or two to record all of these songs, so he was really scraping the bucket. He recorded this album at Owl Studios, which was hopefully in Chicago. I did not write that down in my script, but considering he, you know, lived in Chicago at the time, I'm assuming it was there. And the topics talked about in this album are a bit all over the place, but they usually they come together by the end of the album. Now, Norman Whiteside was involved in the life of crime, though I couldn't really find much about his, you know, what he exactly did i've heard things such as like drugs selling it i've heard him being some kind of big drug person like selling a lot of it you know being like a kingpin now i'm not gonna really back any of those claims because i do not want to defame him or his name because currently today he is a changed man but you know i don't want to fame and also take all that with a grain of rice. It reflected in his music that he was definitely in a life of crime. The topics talked about were love, drugs, sex, and weird sex mentions throughout the album. Um, he goes into very weird uh, tangents on it and uh, weird metaphors for it. Um, it's one thing that I couldn't really wrap my head around on this album, but it's whatever. During this time, he was friends with the label's co-founder, Rob Sv... S fuck, man. You know, I don't know how to pronounce many things. Despite my dad being an English teacher, I have no clue how to pronounce anything. So, Rob Sev... Sev... Sever... 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 Hopefully. I'm hoping I got that right. That's not even a hard word to pronounce, but it just... It just... just getting to me right now. <laughs> Most people who found his music during this time and listened to it noticed that he really had something special about him. He played all the music, all the, you know, guitars, all the synths, everything on here, including the piano, which is, and his voice and piano is really beautifully displayed in the song I Think I'm In Love With You, which is the last track on the album. The album was amazing to listen to, by the way. Anyways, this is the cover. Now, this cover is very, um... It's simple. I quite like it. Of course, there's an aeroplane. There's a lady sitting there. Um, the first time I listened to this album, or started listening, I think it was to Aeroplane Reprise. Um, I was like, okay, well, there's a female here. Why? Are there, why is there a male singing on the next song? Because I didn't really understand at the time. Because the name is We on Music Services. That's I'm referring to him as Norman Whiteside. Because that's really the man who's behind it all. Um. But, you know, it's a very interesting album cover. I quite like it. It's simple. Gets the point across. And, you know, the album's pretty amazing to listen to. Now, despite the local buzz he gained when he originally released the album, it never really stepped out of Chicago. So, he went back eventually to his life of crime. Now, between this period of the release date and the time of his arrest, 
was a little bit blurry because a lot of the interviews didn't really go deep into what that was and I could completely understand it's a very sensitive topic to talk about um there are many conflicting stories of whatever happened during his arrest period and what happened for his arrest but you know I just I'm not going to go too into it considering I couldn't get any solid information I do not want to defame him because that's just not a very good thing to do. It would eventually all catch up to him in 1985 when he was arrested. Two of his friends had bragged about a dispute with a rival gang that eventually led up into a shooting. And somewhere during the bragging about it, they mentioned Norman Whiteside as an accomplice. Norman Whiteside didn't really figure this out until he turned on the news and realized a stray bullet from that shooting had shot an innocent 18 year old girl. Norman Whiteside is quoted as saying in an interview with Days Digital, They said I had masterminded the whole thing, and the judge made me out like I was Charles Manson. I could not believe what I was hearing. And that was it. After the hearing, he was sentenced to a lot of years in prison. He was going to be there until he died. But, this is where this part of the story ends, and with every door closing, another door opens. <laughs> In 2008, while he was still in jail, the Numero Group had contacted him about releasing his album a second time on streaming services and remastering the whole thing for the digital age. And they were going to rerun the vinyl and CD pressings. Of course, him not really having much to lose, he agreed to it and said, go ahead. And this is the point of the story which really turned for the absolute good for Norman. Many people found the repressings and the re-release songs on streaming services as the Numero Group had been releasing stuff like this before, and so they already had an audience waiting for these next albums to release that they've never heard of. And the record had been brought to light again, to a much bigger audience. For the next couple years, many big names heard about his music. One of the first really to bring his music to big light was Kanye West. In his song Bound 2, he released on the album Yeezus, he had originally sampled Norman Whiteside's aeroplane reprise. Even though he still ditched the sample, he still interpolates the song. So he had to credit Norman Whiteside as a writer. And eventually, when Yeezus was nominated for a Grammy, the way the Grammys worked then and still do today, he technically co-wrote the song, therefore he was liable for a Grammy. And so, here he is. He's been locked up in prison for 30 plus years. And every cellmate noting him as very talkative but nice. And when he got the news that he was nominated for a Grammy, he could not believe it. This is what he stated in an interview with Days Digital. The prison guards thought I was crazy when I told them I was nominated for a Grammy. Kanye's music is the high that finally got me out of prison. Hip hop sampling literally changed my life. This wasn't the last time he was, of course, sampled. Logic sampled his music on the intro track to his debut album, Under Pressure, again having credits on the song and gaining money from both credits on the songs. It was about 2015 2016 when Frank Ocean found his music during his endless album sessions, and he eventually sampled I Think I Am in Love with You in one of the ambience tracks on Endless. But since Endless was technically not officially released, even though Norm Whiteset is credited on the song, he's really not gaining much money from it. Not to mention all the praise he's gotten since then. Being sampled by so many famous producers, a lot of fans had gone his way. Eventually, all of his legal efforts and money he had put into this were successful. On his birthday in 2016, he was granted to be released on September 1st, 2016. Nowadays, he's just living his life and enjoying his days. He currently runs the music program at a local church and is loved by his community. Now, that's where his story ends, but don't leave yet. I have some things to talk about. The last video gained a lot of traction. I would like to say thank you for it. I've been making videos for a really long time now on multiple different channels and I doubt you could find every channel I've made. I mostly made that Dominic Fike video because I, when I was originally trying to look for info about him, I couldn't find any useful videos on him. Mostly it was just talking about DFAM and above. And so I really got intrigued by his story and I learned all about it, but I wasn't even dedicated on making a video on that point. I'd really given up with YouTube and given up with doing that type of stuff. but. 
I eventually thought, hey, this video could help a lot of people understand his story, and the label has hidden a lot from it. And so that's what I did, and I pumped that video out in about five days. Um, I was spending hours editing that video, even though I'm not like the best editor. Um, I know my way around editing software. I would just like to thank you for all the support I've gotten and all the comments that has been sent my way. I'm hoping if I get just a bit more traction and actually am able to get into the partner program, I can really start doing this more full time. Currently I'm homeschooled, I do online school, so I do have a lot of time to write all these scripts and such, but it still is very useful for you to subscribe and just watch videos, like them, comment, stuff like that. I'm really trying to get this off the ground. Now, once summer rolls around, I probably won't have much alone time to do these videos. Um, so I'm probably going to record in advance and then release accordingly. This next video will be about this p musician who you're probably not going to have ever heard of. Plus, it's probably not going to get many views, but I really think this is an artist that should really be pushed out further. I was lucky enough to have a conversation with him. And, you know, I talked for, with him for over an hour, and it was, I mean, it was a great experience. I had some good talks with him about music and such, and about his story in general. And, you know, I, I'm really excited for this video. Person and name is a artist named Scuba Diver. I do recommend go checking out his music before I do release the video. He's a very talented individual. He's producing and mixing all of his stuff, you know, playing all the piano, he's playing all the everything and he's a really good sampler. I really only go after stories that are really interesting so I promise it will be a good video despite him being fairly unknown. But again, this is the end of the video. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Subscribe and like the video and wait for the next one. Peace.